Our next topic on gravity is going to be what we call the orbital velocity. The velocity an object has to have in order to be in orbit around another planet or moon or anything like that. So let's take the Earth for example. What will it take for a satellite to travel around the Earth? And let's first assume that the satellite is going to travel very closer to the surface of the Earth, just a few feet above the surface, avoiding all buildings and trees and mountains and so forth. So just as a, a theoretical example. Well, later on we'll take a look at a real orbit, let's say a satellite being 500 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, which is of course a lot more realistic. Okay, how do we do that? Again, as something travels around an orbit, we know that there's a force inward, which is the force due to gravity, and that is of course equal to the centripetal force. So we set those two equal to each other, what do we get? We have uh, then of course G m big m over r squared is equal to m v squared over r. So we know that the centripetal force is equal to the gravitational force. Then of course the mass of the satellite doesn't matter, that cancels out. This r will cancel out one of those. And so now what we have is we have g m over r is equal to v squared. If we then of course reverse the equation, take the square root of both sides, we can say that the vo velocity is equal to the square root of g m over r, and this is then known as the orbital velocity, so we'll call it v sub o for orbital velocity. Now let's see what that would be if we plug in some numbers here. So this is equal to the square root of 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, multiply times the mass of the earth, which is uh, 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms, and the whole thing divided by the radius of the Earth, which is 6,378,000 meters. All right, what would that be? So we have a 6.67 e to the 11 minus times 5.98 e to the 24 divided by 6378000 equals, and take the square root of that, and we get... 7,908 meters per second. Of course it would be meters per second, so that's about, that's about 8 kilometers per second, so about 8 kilometers per second, which is about 5 miles per second. So an object that wants to stay in orbit around the Earth, very close to the surface of the Earth, would have to be moving at about 5 miles per second, 8 kilometers per second, or almost 8,000 meters per second. Of course, that's not quite realistic, um, because that close to the Earth, for one thing, moving that fast through the atmosphere, everything would heat up tremendously, and you'd probably burn up from the, from the heat developed on the, on the spacecraft. And secondly, of course, you'd be running into trees and buildings and mountains. It just wouldn't work. So you want to be above the atmosphere, let's say at a height of 500 kilometers. Now, of course, the radius then becomes the radius of the Earth plus the height of the orbit. So then we can say that the orbital velocity would be equal to the square root of uh, g times m, that's still the same, divided by the radius of the Earth plus the height of the orbit. So plugging that number in, it'll be everything the same except we're going to add, of course, the height of the orbit. So this is equal to the square root of uh, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons meters squared per kilogram squared times the mass of the Earth, 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. And the whole thing divided by the radius of the Earth, which is 6378000 meters plus another 500,000 meters, because 500 kilometers is 500,000 meters. So what would that be equal to? 6.67 e to the 11 minus times 5.98 e to the 24th divided by 6878000, and then take the square root of that, and so a little bit less it would now be 7,615 uh, meters per second. All right, so that would then be the typical orbital velocity of the satellite, 500 kilometers up uh, above the surface of the Earth. Now, you may wonder, well, how long does it take one of those satellites to circumvent the Earth? Well, we can say that distance or velocity is equal to distance divided by time, which means that time is equal to distance divided by velocity. The distance would be 2 pi times the radius, in this case it would be the radius of the Earth, plus the height of the orbit divided by its velocity. Okay, so we can plug in the numbers here, so this would be equal to 2 pi times 
the total radius, that would be the sum of the two. Where do we have the sum? That's the sum of those two right there. So it would be 6,878,000 meters divided by the velocity of 7,615 meters per second. And so what do we get? So take the inverse of that times 2 times pi times 6878000 equals, and that would be the total number of seconds, that would be 5,675 seconds. And of course, converting that to hours, because it makes a lot more sense that way, divided by 3,600, and that would be 1.576 hours. So 1.576 hours a little bit more than one and a half hours, a little bit more than 90 minutes for a satellite to make it around the Earth just once. That's pretty amazing. But again, this is a very important equation. The orbital velocity of any object around any other object because the gravitational force is simply g times the mass of the object being circumvented, being circled, divided by the radius of the orbit. So it's a pretty straightforward, simple equation. And of course, if we deal with the radius of the Earth and the height above the Earth right here, if you take into account satellite motion, make sure you know what you're talking about as far as the radius of the orbit. It's not just the radius of the planet, but the radius of the orbit of the object. Okay, and that's how you do that.